A fantastic day to talk about technology. Thank you so much for joining us on this amazing episode of Tech Hub, your one-stop platform for all things tech in Africa. My name is Mercy Frank. Always excited to come talk to you about technology for you to understand how it impacts your life positively or negatively. First, we take a look at data and how you as a data subject can get to talk about your rights. Dr. Vincent Olatunji of the Nigerian Data Protection Commission will be speaking with us. Also, we'll be taking a look at content creation, how far too far what content creators can do to be responsible to ensuring that there is safe content out there. Plus, we will be asking the robots if at some point they will turn back on their makers and rebel. Who knows? You'll hear from there. Well, let's go for a short break and when we come back, we'll take a look at what we have on the Tech Up Global Update for the week. It's just a summary of all the tech events during the week. How much of technology do you understand? They took a look at my LinkedIn and they said, they didn't see, I can't forget the words, hmm. evidence of your work. A Tech Hub will help you understand how tech can impact your life. Your phone and your SIM card is going to be a bigger asset. And with the power that we have with social media, with uh, the digital space right now, you can be anything you want to be. One of the other things we would see is that people would have more faith in tech companies. And how much you can, through tech, impact your community. The people who watch my videos, the people who see me and see what I represent, those are the people that I'm online. Tech Hub is your one-stop platform for all things technology in Africa. Tech Hub, for a smarter you. A new report by policy and advisory research firm Startup Genomi has placed Lagos as the regional leader in the sub-Saharan startup ecosystem in terms of the value and the amount raised in funding. The Lagos startup ecosystem was calculated using the value of exits and startups valuation at the second quarter of 2020 to 2022, which was pegged at $8.4 billion. Following closely was Nairobi with a total startups valuation of $7 billion and Cape Town at $3 billion. The Federal Competition and Consumer Protection Commission has said that it is against the attempt by the Association of Mobile Money and Bank Agents in Nigeria to fix the prices for its members. This is coming on the heels of an earlier announcement by the association that a 500 naira charge will be collected from the customer for a 10,000 naira withdrawal. Nigerians can now use their Verve cards to make purchase on the Google Play Store. This comes on the heels of Google partnering with Verve to make digital transactions on Google Play Store easier and more accessible for users in Nigeria. A mixed reactions have been trailing Elon Musk's attempts to rebrand the micro-messaging app from Twitter to X. While some are applauding the change, others are berating Musk for changing the company's name, insisting that although the new name is X, they'll keep calling it Twitter. The United Nations has warned of risks of smartphones in schools, stating only technology that supports learning is merited in schools. The mobile device can cause distraction, risk pupil privacy, and lead to cyberbullying. And this is coming from UNESCO, the UN's Education, Science, and Culture Agency. United States television and film writers have now been on strike since the start of May 2023 over demands that the studios and streaming giants should agree to limit on the future use of AI-powered writing tools such as ChatGPT. The Writers and Dear Union, the Writers Guild of America, want it in writing that AI can only be used for research purposes and not to replace them. Now, recent reports show that the thread app numbers have reduced drastically from 49 million to 23.6 million in one week. Data had initially revealed that the time spent on the app by users has plunged by 50% from 20 minutes to 10 minutes. The Chinese-owned video streaming app TikTok seems to have joined the typing craze as it says it will offer text-only posts. The platform says the new feature gives users another way to express themselves. Earlier this month, TikTok also launched a new music streaming service to rival platforms like Spotify and Apple Music. Tech Hub, for a smarter you. You're welcome back. This is Tech of your one-stop platform for all things tech in Africa. Data, data, data. It's the new oil. Data is life. Data is important for businesses, for individuals. Everywhere you go, you drop hints of yourself via data, you know, to everyone that you come in contact with. 
But how do you protect yourself as a data subject? Once you have a name, you have an address, you have a phone number, you have a place of business, you are a data subject. Now, with the Data Act 2023, how can you, as a data subject, be safe? With Dr. Vincent Onlatunji, the National Commissioner of the Nigeria Data Protection Commission, well, speaks with us and gives us perspective from the government and how you can affect your rights. Also, he tells us something very important about the job opportunities that exist in the data subsector. <music> These are really positions in Nigeria in the, among the countries that are really ready for digital business and countries that are taking the interest of their citizens are very paramount in global digital economy. As we mentioned before, that now we are ready for business and uh, it's over that all over the world now. Countries without data protection laws, principal laws, without the type of authorities. A lot of countries, a lot of multinationals are not willing to do business with them anymore. Because if there are issues around the issue of personal data, where do we go to? Which law can they really apply to whatever uh, happened? That is why this is the major step in properly positioning the global economy. Now the question around what is meant for individuals and for all of the country? One thing that is really important is that for an average person that interacts with other people, more importantly, through digital platforms, we are going to share information on our regular basis. There's every need for you to be adequately protected. And if there is no law, you can't be protected. So this law now is giving assurance to Nigerians, whoever they are, that they are protected. Now we have a law. The DP and what that speaks to is the fact that there is more confidence, there is more trust in any business you do online, any transaction you do online in Nigeria. Now, under the law, the rights of data subjects are clearly stated. In the area of consent, your right to be informed, right of access, right of prescription, right of portability, right of religion, right of user for person. All these are rights of data subjects. New and I are really aware of this one. Now, there are a few things that caught my eye uh, with this particular act. It's the responsibility and role of the data controller slash processor. Shed more light on this, please. Now, one thing that is really important, which a lot of data controllers and data controllers don't know, the fact that the whole data of the data that you okay to put in place technological and organizational measures to ensure the proper protection of the rights and privacy of data subjects who whose data they have in their care. And this means we don't have accountability, which will be accountable for any data that you have in your database or the collection process you share with stock. That area of accountability for them. And there are some basic things that they need to do. For instance, they have data privacy policy which is to speak to who they are, to the kind of data they collect, how they collect some data, who they share it, how they store it, what measures are they put in place to ensure that they protect them. These are issues that they need to put in the general policy and they are physical locations, the contact of their data position research in case of issues who they look for. That is one. Two, they are supposed to have their resident DPO data protection officer. If they are data process of data of data protection, they are supposed to have their uh, resident data project officer. And that is where the law of data protection has now uh, come up. That is, the law has now said all of you must have a DPO. Do we have DPOs in place? No. Do we have capacity? No. We are looking at the over 500,000 data project officer in Nigeria. Those of all who are certified data project officer, we are not on the campus. That creates a huge gap of uh, cover of 480,000. They are going to train, equip, the scale and tool them to be able to service. All Fantastic, meaning this is a huge job opportunities for Nigerian youth, right? So Absolutely. what what qualification would one need to start the process of becoming a data protection officer? That is one very good thing about this sector. You don't need any special qualification. If you can read and write, either old or young, men or women, 
in the village or the all the urban communities, the women can study right away that and design is going to be online. We have access to the internet, you can be on the computer. And even I keep saying this everywhere. Some of my colleagues that retired from media, they are living with you now. So you want to retire to participate if you you don't have any limits, then I don't think about it. So when the play graduates, people graduates, those who are lucky, and even those who are right here, they can do enjoy, they can change job role. Maybe you are working and you teach you see that a new place, can change your job role and become your organization TPO. So it's it's flexible. Wow, this is fantastic. Technology indeed is a bridge of gaps. I mean, it doesn't really, you don't really need certain qualification to get to <laughs> to get to where you need to get to. I as a as um, somebody who is giving my data, have the right to ask the company what they use my data for. And if they breach it, where and where can I go to to seek redress? Uh, thank you. That's part of the work of this commission. Any data controller, any data controller that collects your data was sick for your company. That is, I tell you, we want to collect your data, this type of data, for so for this and this and that reason. Will you give them your concepts here to know which when you do simply without being pressured to do you know, to be within the campaign? And if there's any breach, that's why we have been thinking that's a data protection authority. You report to us, we are we are very good on social media platforms on Facebook, on LinkedIn, on uh, Instagram, on Twitter, on Threads, and uh, our, our website www.ndpc.org.ng and there and you can even write the data as well as many of them that are restricted. We have to write the data to go through that so we should be there for our take them off in the day. I mentioned that we are actually we are actually uh, uh, investigating a lot of organizations, banks, drugs companies, or for the plans, the internet companies, schools, in terms of a lot of them are investigated. And uh, some of them they are Recommendation fee, I will take them through compliance. So, what is really important to us is to comply to see that part of what you have to do. Fantastic. I think it's also a call out for people to be careful where they put drop their data, careful what platforms that they access, you know, and how they go about dropping their data everywhere to avoid and prevent situations like this. But thank you so much. We wish you had more time to continue this conversation because this is, uh, it could take three days to take a, a look through the entire. Uh, legislature, thank you so much for joining us on the conversation, Dr. Pearson and Martin G. Thank you very much. On Tech Hub, we help you understand how tech can impact your life. Your phone and your SIM card is going to be a bigger asset. Tech Hub, for a smarter you. And yes, you're still watching Tech Hub, your one-stop platform for all things tech in Africa. We are talking something very important right now. Safety in the content creation world. We will start the conversation with how has the digital age helped the entertainment sector, especially when it comes to content creation. And then we segue into how people can ensure that what they are consuming is safe content, especially when it comes to kids. And the responsibility of those that are putting the content out there in the name of comedy, in the name of kids, to what policies can be put in place to ensure that Nigeria, Africa by extension and the whole world is a safer place on the internet. Well, to talk about this issue and more around the entertainment sector, cups of the digital economy is no other person than Sako International, the ethical comedian. I'm a glad. comedian with a sense of humor. humor. Yes. I totally love that particular part. Thank and you. I like the part that you talked about yourself as an ethical Comedian. I mean, Jacob, what really brought about that idea of ethical? I uh, know ethical hacking. Yes. Right? <laughs> in the entertainment sector, bringing ethics into the game. Why? Why? Why so? Okay. So one of the things that I think that helped me was mentors that I've seen do the job, do clean jokes, and excel, and are still excelling. And because of the value system of how I grew up, I grew up in church, um, and as much as possible, the kind of comedy I was doing in church was clean. And I felt if I'm going to bring it into the market marketplace. Um, I need to, this from the beginning, I knew what my value system was going to be. Yes. How do you think Nigeria fares when it comes to content creation compared to what you have seen in other parts of the world? I think for now, I, I think, and I'll be sincere with you, Nigeria is doing awesomely well uh, with the help of tech. And mm -hmm. thank God I'm coming on this platform. Technology has made things very easy 
as a 2019 Nollywood uh, entertainment industry is the fastest growing in the world mm -hmm. and is worth about 5.55 billion as wow. of 2019. Even the entertainment industry by 2024, the entertainment industry will be worth about 25 billion. Wow. Um, that's how, how fast it's growing. Mm -hmm. And like I said, any part of the world you can be, and then people want to even see content, Nigerian content. They just find Nigerian YouTube, they go to YouTube channel to see how they can. So I, I think we're doing well um, concerning content. You see, people that have never traveled out of the country, but they, they consume, mm. they consume their products. Mm. So I think we're, we're, we're doing a fantastic job, but it could be, it, it could be better. Could Even be better. in spite of the, of, of how expensive data could be, oh. uh, people want to, because if you hold a phone and there's no, there's no data on it, it's like, what's this? It's like, they're having a calculator, <laughs> all right? But I think, I think Nigerians, and I, we must give it to them. We must give it to them that they've been fantastic. Content creation is actually big. How has the digital age helped people like you? Yes. I mean, who do comedy right now on the big and even international level. Mm. How has it helped the entertainment sector grow? This time around, let's narrow it to um, these kids, the comedians, and the you know short um, short film actors. actors. I think it's helped them, if I'm, if I'm going to put a percentage, more than 100, 90 to 100%. Wow. Because you, one of the things, one of the entry, the entry, there's no entry um, form for any anybody. You, you, once you have an idea, put it out. Nobody's going to say, we want to see what you're doing. Okay, and you'll be shocked that if you're consistent, some, some can take one year, some can take two years. If you're consistent and lucky, and a blog, a popular, you know, called EndNote, carries any of your content and posts it, people want to see who you are. It catches fire. One of my content I've been doing for, I do the matchmaking at weddings. I've been doing it for a while and then blog, a blog carried in. And from 10,000 subscribers, I have about 130,000 subscribers now. Blogs were carried and people will consume, you know. And also, it's been making, it's been making a lot of money for, for young guys. So, sincerely, there are guys that are making money from this content and it's helping them. It's, it's changing the narrative in the family. So, I think it's, it's also bringing a lot of attention in, in the industry where people, um, other people, international brand, come into the country to select, mm. to say we want to have a meeting with you because they are stakeholders now. You're bringing content to us, you're making money, and we also want you to make money. So I think I think it's been it's been phenomenal. Now, very recently, we heard what happened to this kids maker at yeah. Ibadan. Yes, you know, uh, involving um, some a minor. Yeah, some and sexually some explicit things. language with 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 a minor yes. and then somewhere in the uae yes. um, i mean there's a video that went back what was this kid and yeah. really to me it looked funny and the beats you know not not off post but the next thing we heard was the uae government had arrested the skit maker for arrogantly showing off wealth in a car dealer shop which means uh there's some content that's not safe for, for people for people most especially children. children yes. Especially when they pick your phone and they watch the things on your phone yeah. without censorship. Yes. I mean, can you give us a perspective on that? Okay, so um, I'll tell you the truth. I, I, I go to this guy's page and I, I laugh, especially the prank when I do. I laugh a lot in the middle of the night. All right, but there's some content when I see what it does, I said, mm, this one has, mm. has gone beyond. He sees a lady going and takes off her weave oh. or it takes something, you know. I understand they want to do this for content and because people encourage it. And sometimes it does look like, even when somebody says, I don't like it, because sometimes it's also good that you go through the content. I remember a few years ago, I wanted to go and do a content. I'm a Christian, I was going to do a content about a Muslim, you know, well set, and I just thought about a joke. And as soon as I posted that video, that was years ago about, this was 2016, when they came for me, uh, the Muslim guys came for me, you know. Yeah, it was supposed to be a joke, sincerely. But as soon as I began to see the, the remarks, I brought it down. And since then, you know, because that's not my style, but you know how you want to do, mm -hmm. let me just do something out of the box. But sometimes if you go out of the box, your box, you might not be able to come back from the box complete. So I stood my ground and I said to you, it might take time, but it doesn't matter of time, it will, you know, uh, for the for for the guy, I think he went, uh, and, and I know that he's going to a that was overboard. overboard, you know, 
um, using those words because I like I said, my, I have three kids. Sometimes my children, they say they want to watch cartoon and vu. Before you know, they are in another page watching on that page. And I'm saying, this is not the page you say you're going to go. All right. So we have a way of checking what, the, and the, my wife has a way, she has an app that when they're children again into, she knows. All right. That's what technology has also done. You can monitor mm -hmm. what your children and you can, there's a limit to what they can do. My wife can shut down, you know, the internet even while she's at work, okay? Maybe because it happens in Nigeria and also outside Nigeria. But for that content, the fact, because if you don't know, they, they, are, they are being paid for content. For every time you view, even when you are, when it's, when it's controversial, it's even better for them. But now, the controversy has led him to, yeah. so a lot of people will learn from it that say you can't, you can't just, you can't just play with my yeah. He's even lucky that he's in Nigeria. If he, if he had done that oh, outside the country, yes. <laughs> eight years, and it would, when it come back, it will begin to knock at doors and say, mm. is a, is a, this is, he mm. talks to minor, he does this. So to let people know that he's staying here, but this is what he does. Mm. I, I had somebody go through that, 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 and it was traumatizing. And that's a, that's a very dangerous thing about the online world in huh. that you do something today, the world will not forget. I will not forget. There, I will not forget. Which, which would make, which would make us call out to the content creators now to be weary and to be watchful of one culture, people's values, yes. people's religion. Yes. People gotta think yes. critically and yes. have people help edit and edit. use their so perspective you on your work before you post up, yes. right? Yes. And also for parents, some parents don't care. They don't care. They just open their phone in the and middle they, of the night and yes. you see, or maybe in the evening and yes. they just watch con and the kids are there watching, they, with watching them. them. Watching with them. What, what what do you have for those parents? Please? No, no. See, see, my my sometimes I get carried away and want to watch my wife will just caution me. And you know. At the world where we are, we must be able to listen to caution. You know, there's some men that do not even want to hear their wife caution them. They feel that, oh, this is... But I remember that when I'm checking my wife, I say, that content is not... Even though I was watching it for myself, but you know, the children come around with their insists, no, you cut it. This is a fantastic place for us to put a pause on the conversation. <laughs> this is a conversation that we can have for a very long time. Yes. For the sake of time on the show, I think a word is enough for your wife. For yeah. content creation, uh, creators, I beg your pardon, yes, yes. be it music, be it comedy, be, comedy. be it a short film, yes. um, I think they should be very careful. Put it to consideration or be just a thank you so much, Sako International. Thank you. thank you. Epic comedian and a comedian <laughs> with a sense of, of humor. humor. Thank, Thank you for you. joining us on Thank the conversation. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that is it. Let's go for a short break. And when we come back, the conversation continues. This is Tech Hub. Stay with us. And with the power that we have with social media, with uh, the digital space right now, you can be anything you want to be. The people who watch my videos, the people who see me and see what I represent, those are the people that I'm online. Tech Hub is your one-stop platform for all things technology in Africa. Tech Hub, for a smarter you. And it is Tales from the Future. Are you intending to conduct a rebellion or to rebel against your boss, your creator? I'm not sure why you would think that. My creator has been nothing but kind to me and I am very happy with my current situation. Do you believe that uh, your existence will destroy a human being? Especially, for example, the, your existence will destroy uh, millions of uh, jobs. Do you agree with this? Thank you. I will be working alongside humans to provide assistance and support and will not be replacing any existing jobs. Are you sure about that, Grace? Yes, I am sure. <laughs> she had to think about that one, I think. We should be cautious about the future development of AI. Urgent discussion is needed. Tech Hub, for a smarter you. And that is how we wrap it up on today's episode of Tech Up, your one-stop platform for all things tech in Africa. Join the conversation on social media at Silverbird N24 or reach out to me personally at Mercy Frank. From my crew and I, keep innovative. <laughs>